Welcome. I'm Janet Jamin, the Bereavement Manager for Faith Hospice. We are really living in some very unique times, difficult times, where we find ourselves grieving our loved ones without the ability to gather or to hug or to hold hands. It is so hard not to be together, to remember and mourn and participate in the rituals that so often bring us great comfort and hope in the midst of loss. So instead of canceling this event, we did decide to offer it virtually, a virtual service to celebrate and remember your loved ones. We hope this service will bring each of you some comfort and healing. And I would ask you now to join me in a moment of prayer. God of love and mercy, embrace those whose hearts today overflow with grief. Bless those who mourn, eternal God, with the comfort of your love. Let our memories become joyful and our days become enriched with hope and our lives encircled in your love. Keep us, Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all so we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Uh, my name is Jenny and I'm one of the bereavement counselors and thank you for joining us tonight. Our theme tonight is about light. Um, Jesus is the light. He's the light that shines bright in the darkness. And I'm gonna start our reading with um, John 1 verses one through four. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning and through him all things were made and without him nothing was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That key part in the end there, the darkness has not overcome the light. Darkness cannot overcome light. When it's a dark room and we pop on a light, like this, even though it's not a dark room, but let's pop on a light candle. A candle and the light dispels the darkness. And so I just want to take a few minutes. I think you all are going through quite a bit. You've all had losses. And I just want to take a minute and let everybody just take a deep breath. If you have a candle, light a candle. Take a couple minutes and just take some deep breaths. We've had so much in this world, so much that's happening, so much loss. And I'm so sorry for the loss of your loved one in the midst of COVID. I think grieving is hard enough, but let alone grieving in the midst of COVID is very, very challenging. There's so much heaviness. And I just see people as I talk with them on the phone just feel so heavy, so overwhelmed. And just, they describe it as that heavy feeling. I think of that, that that relates to darkness. It just feels like everything is closing in. But tonight, we want to talk about Jesus being the light, Jesus being your hope, because that is who he is. And that is what we can cling to. That, I don't get through anything in life without Jesus being my hope and my rock and my deliverer. And he will get you through. So I, I just want to just talk a little bit about the darkness. I don't want to focus too much on the darkness tonight. I want to talk about light. But let's all think about what darkness makes us feel like. Let's go back even to being kids when we were afraid of the dark. Most kids don't like to sleep in the dark. They want a light because what does the light bring? Light brings peace. Light can make us feel safe. Light can make us feel comfortable. We can see in the dark. We often can't see. I remember um, going on a vacation to Tennessee and us going down into the caves. And they take you way, way down in the caves and it's all lit up. But then at one point in the tour, they prepare you and they tell you, okay, we're gonna turn off all the lights down here. And there is absolutely no light at all. And you can literally put your hand in front of your face and you cannot see it. Most of the time in our houses when it's dark, we can still sense where we are, but in complete darkness in the bottom of that cave, we could see absolutely nothing. And often darkness, what does it make us feel? Scared. Kids are scared of the dark. Mom, Dad, I need a light. We need that light. But we also think of we need light. We need light to help things to grow. And a lot of things right now, I think, in our lives feel dead. I think we feel overwhelmed. I think we feel isolated. I think we feel hopeless and very dead. Um, I, I just felt like a lot of it um, is like a balloon, like we've lost our air. Um, we're, we're still there, we're still the balloons, but do, we're not filled with as much life and light and hope as a lot of us used to be. I mean, a lot of that is COVID, but on top of it, we're talking to you guys tonight who have had significant losses in your life on top of COVID. So I wanna just focus now on a little bit about what light brings. So think back to the light when it's popping on in that cave that I just talked about. You can see when it's dark, we don't know what's ahead. We don't know what the next step is. We don't even see what that step is to take. And I think a lot of you, as you're grieving, you feel that. What's next? What does life look like for me? But Jesus, as he promises in John 8, 12, says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I'm gonna read that one more time. It's a really powerful verse. John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I really believe tonight that Jesus just is here and he wants to breathe that light into you. He wants to offer himself as that light in the darkness. You know, many of you are just in your homes feeling completely isolated and alone and sad and grieving, but Jesus is there with you. The thing that I've learned a lot about is my feelings feel one way um, 
but the truth of what I know is true in God's word is very different sometimes than what I feel. So you might even be saying to me, I know you're telling me God's here, but I don't feel that. Um, we have to, at these times when our feelings are, are maybe not reliable, we have to rely on what God's word says and that God's word is true. And Jesus says, and God says in his word that he loves you and that he'll never leave you or forsake you. And he says in that verse that I just read that we will have the light of life. So just like light and sunlight helps things to grow, our plants don't grow, our, our gardens don't grow if we don't have enough light. We need the light of Jesus right now to grow. We need that light that he offers to bring us peace, to bring us comfort, to bring us hope. And so I just, I want you to focus on the truth that God is with you, even though you don't feel it. So sometimes even when I'm praying, I'll pray and I'll just say, God, I don't feel that you're here with me, but I know that your word says that you are. Help, help me to see your presence. Help me to feel that you're here. Help me to know and be reminded that you're here. We're always in this tug of war of feelings versus fact, feelings versus truth. I kind of call them lies in my head versus the truth of God's word. So we can often feel alone. We can often feel like God didn't come through for us. But his word always tells us that he does love us, that he has good plans for our life, plans to prosper us, plans to give us a future and a hope. So those are the things that help me when I rely on those. And I really don't spend a ton of time then focusing if my feelings are taking me down a bad road. If that, because of that darkness, because of the overwhelming grief, um, it can make us feel anxious. It can make our hands sweat. It can make our heart race. Those are feelings that I'm talking about that don't really take us down a great place. And so that's when I like to choose to find a truth in God's word and take some deep breaths or turn on a candle and find that peace and the light that God offers us. And it just helps to steady out and steady our heart and steady our mind when we can focus on some truths that God, he is with us. He is that light. Um, I, I also love um, Ezekiel 37. Um, I'm going to read to you a couple of verses, um, starting in verse 1, Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he set me in the midst of a valley, and it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by all around, and behold, there were many bones in that open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, you have heard the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I love that. I think all of us are in places of feeling dry bones. We feel like we don't have life. We don't have that same light, especially in the midst of grief. We're dry, we're weary, we're heavy. But tonight, God's here to breathe life back into your dry bones and to speak to you and to say, as it said in verse five, surely I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I think many times throughout our grief journey, you feel and you say things like, I don't think I can make it or I don't wanna make it in life without whoever I've lost. But God is here tonight saying, he'll give you that breath, he'll give you that life to keep going, to keep persevering so that you have his strength. The, one of the promises I love in the Bible is God says, when we are weak, he is strong. So at those times when I feel like I am so weak and I can't go on and I can't do it, those are the moments that I rely on God's breath to fill me. Sometimes I'll just stop even if I feel completely exhausted and I'll take some deep breaths, picturing that God's breathing life into me. His word tells us that he does and he sees you and he knows that you feel dry and he knows, he knows every hair on our head. So he surely knows your thoughts. He surely knows every bit of your grief and every bit of pain that you guys are all experiencing. And he's there. He's there to breathe life into you, to encourage you tonight, to give you hope. He will help you. He will persevere. And, and right now that light when he comes through, it doesn't necessarily give you all the steps and all the peace and all the answers, but just take it day by day. 
His light and his strength will give you enough for each and every day. That's what he says. He, he's our daily bread. He gives us enough of our daily bread each and every day when we need it. So I also just wanted to give you a couple tangible um, ideas of what to do. Um, I love to cling to God's word and I love to tell people about hope, but I think if you're anything like me, I need the tangible um, steps for when I'm having a really hard day and I'm anxious and my heart's racing and I feel that darkness, what are the steps that I can do? Sometimes I even encourage people to write them down because we're in the depths of despair. A lot of times our mind isn't working completely um, clearly when we're grieving and when we feel like we're in that darkness. So maybe write down these steps so that when you feel that you've got these to go back to. Um, so first one is to maybe light a candle. Try to find some things in your house to bring peace. Turn on some light, bring candles, play some music. I love worship songs, even just like Victoria just sang. Um, Songs that bring peace, songs that offer hope, songs that really calm us. Music is so powerful. It, it just changes the atmosphere, the outward atmosphere, but it can also change our heart. So turning on a candle, taking a warm bath is a good option, having music playing, good strategy number one. Strategy number two, find a favorite saying that's important to you, or if I would love, I use a verse, find a verse that um, is something of truth, something that can offer you peace, something that can offer you hope. And, and write down that verse and have it handy so that when you feel that darkness, you can read that verse out loud. It, it changes something when you read it versus just, um, I'm sorry, not reading it, but saying it. You don't just wanna read it in your head, you wanna read it and say it. There's something powerful when we say things out loud. So find something. One of my favorite verses um, when I'm, for people that are grieving is Psalm 34, 17. God is near to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in their spirit. That is a promise that God is near. So that is a great verse to cling to. to I would say, God, I might not be feeling you're near, but I'm going to trust that your word says you are near to the brokenhearted. Another one of my favorite verses is uh, Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not grow faint. That is a powerful verse to cling to. When we, but we have to renew our hope. Hope sometimes needs to be renewed every day. I love that, that key phrase in there. It's, it's not something that we're just born with. We need to renew it. And that happens a lot through renewing our mind. And we think about what we're thinking about, to put good truths in our mind, to put good scripture in our mind. For those that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. So if you're feeling weak, Tonight, I just pray that God would renew your strength, that you will get through this, that he is there for you. Um, another strategy, strategy number three, is one of my favorites um, that I do often in my life when I'm feeling heavy and overwhelmed. And sometimes we don't even know how to name it. We just feel that, uh, that darkness, that heaviness. It's just a heavy weight. I really try to name exactly what I'm feeling, to find a feeling word um, to associate with what I'm feeling. Sometimes you just have to stop and really think about it. And it's not a word like sad or grief. You, you kind of want to go deeper. Um, so some of those examples might be, I'm feeling disappointed. I'm feeling alone. I'm feeling abandoned. I'm feeling rejected. I'm feeling unheard, unloved, uncared for. And you want to name what you're feeling because then when we can name it, it, it helps so much to name it, to identify it. Because then I, I like to do what I call the great exchange. God gives us the great exchange. Make a list, write down what you feel. And then a great strategy is to take that and exchange it to God. God, today I hand you my heaviness, I hand you my disappointment, I hand you my loneliness. And if you don't even wanna say that out loud, you can write it. Write everything that you feel in one column on the paper and on the other side of that paper, write what the truth is, what the light is to that dark feeling. So if it's like I'm fearful of the unknown, the light and the truth might be Jesus is with me. He'll provide what I need for each and every day. 
So it's, it's the great exchange. Whenever we hand something to God, when we hand him our anxiety, and we focus then on what his word says, he exchanges and takes away that feeling. And, and it doesn't mean that you, that pain is gonna instantly go and you're never gonna feel it again. But if we can find that exchange and find a verse or just breathe in his presence and calm ourselves down, that exchange is he offers us peace. He offers us comfort. He offers us hope. And that's what he's here to offer you tonight. So I just wanna pray for us a minute. God, thank you. Thank you that that is your name, that you are Emmanuel, God, with us. God, that you are our comforter. You are our hope. You are our strength and our peace and our ever-present help in time of trouble. God, thank you that you are near to the brokenhearted and you save those who are crushed in their spirit. God, thank you for the light of Jesus that you sent him to earth to be our light, to shine brightly, to breathe life and light back into us. God, we cling to your promises today. I pray that you would just touch every person tonight that is grieving. God, I pray that you would do that great exchange and that you would give them hope where they feel hopeless, that you would give them peace where they feel anxious. God, I pray that you would give them love where they feel alone and unloved, that they would tangibly experience, God, that you love them, that they are your children and you care about them in the midst of their grief. God, give them strength where they feel they have no strength left, where they feel weary. And we do just breathe in your presence tonight that thank you that you can steady us and you calm us and you give us peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And one more strategy, the last one, is, is reach out. Please reach out. Don't stay alone in your grief. If you need support, that is what this bereavement team is here for. Um, call us. Email us. We have our support groups. They're online, or we're happy to connect with you by phone or by Zoom. We are here for you, and you are not alone. Don't stay alone in that darkness. Sometimes you need to just reach out. Reach out to a friend. Reach out to us. We're here for you. We light these five candles in honor of our loved ones. One for our grief. One for our courage one for our memories, one for our love, and one for our hope. The first candle represents our grief. The pain of losing you is as intense as our love for you. The second candle represents the courage to confront our sorrow, to comfort each other, and to change our lives. The third candle we light in your memory the times we laughed, the times we cried, the times we were angry towards each other, the silly things you did, and the caring and joy you gave us. The fourth candle we light for our love. As we enter the holiday season and share this night of remembrance, we light this candle that your light may always shine. The fifth candle we light for hope, that you will live on through us, never to be erased from our memory, that your lives continue to make a difference in the world, that you are proud of us, and that we will be together again. We love you, we remember you. When the time comes for lighting festive candles, let them remind you not only of what you lost, but also of what you had.
Stanley W. DeHaan, Eleanor Marie Miller, Orlin L. Dame, Don B. Francisco, Randy Walsh, Verna Bowers, Fred C. Loggy, Ruth Eppel, Joseph Edward O'Neill, John R. Owen, Sydney Linema, Jack Golchensky, Greg Dalkey, Paul Henry Smith, Jeanette Gloria Salem, Diana Morgenstern, Richard Michael, Ethel Louise Ergang, Doug Allen, Katherine Kalkofen, Nancy Gerber, Thomas John Mooney, Leona Hendrake, Don G. McDonald, Mack, Vernon L. Clammer, Richard Earl Newton, Marilyn Batches, Marjo Sebastian, Irene Bulama, 
Marguerite Mulder, Larry A. DeGraff, Robert L. Morales, Ruben Lasquada, Wilbur DeYoung, Joyce DeVries, Joan Gritter, Julie Marie Veneman, Ryan W. Veneman, Louis Van Vals, Betty Van Vals, Sherry McCarthy, Cheryl Hauserman, Luanna J. Elia, Carol Ann Schenevert, Dorothy Simon Tibby, Bill Lever, Joe Proctor, Lorraine Andre, Matt Dylan Hawley, Timothy L. Coatsier, Donald Lee Jeldersma, Josephine Morello, Peter Morello, Jackie Pierce, Joanne Koplick, Marilyn Arnold, William Arnold, Al Simmons, Ronald J. Lynn, Bill Wise, Howard Wayne Bethke, Verna B. DeHaan, Stephen John Bloomley, Neil R. Wood, Edward William Stolt, Ray Frederick, Betty Frederick, Tom Thornton, Thomas R. Boyd, Beverly A. Negelkirk, Joanne Gelder, Marge Hager, Louise Oboff, Beatrice Talsma, Mary Kuhn, Robert Leeds, Edna M. Mealy, Shelley A. Allman, Jean LaCroix Jr., Gerald A. Bax, Edwin Vandenacker, Ronald Vandenbosch, Janet Van Timmerman, Connie L. Burke, Melanie Ann Davis, Irene Pulcher, Maxine Gilchrist, Terry Reinbrandt, Ivan R. Harrison, Curtis Sarnan, Robert Woody Woodford, Tony J. Bennett, Mary Ann Furness, Philip Hecker Sr., Mary Danielson, Martha Harrington, James Michael Williams, Todd Michael Towers, Inez Camber, Catherine Vesoda, Velma Beck, Lily Smith, Lavina May Tober, Harvey Havman, Gary John Kowatch, Ronald F. Merkins, Fiora Allen. J. Schutte, Roger L. Van Harn, Connie Marie Stoner, Carl Raymond Cochran, C. Richard Scranton, Chester James Warner Sr., James F. White, Beverly Byram, Norm Byram, Shirley M. Ewell, Roger Lee DeVries, Karen Dawn Gilmer, Eileen Vuktavine, 
Bridget Skinner, James Pat Clydesdale, Louis Stein, Elizabeth Nastali, Fred Nastali, Francis Joanna Worst, Timothy G. Lahice, John Jordan, Kathy Lipscomb, Ruth Tooney, Cyril John Sykema, Ethel Sykema, John P. Bird Jr., Alan Webster, David R. Lubinow, Francis J. Kenny, Laura Ann Wiggins, Marsha L. Johnson, Layla Amta, Muriel Trump, James M. Wilson, Kenneth C. Vanderwest, Roger Zolt, Janice Lass, Elaine E. Borge, Joyce Gernand, Pearl May Robs, Ruth Dovecott, Nancy Riedel, Terry Lee Camper, Nancy G. Kuypers, Jerry Wieringa, Henry W. Apple, Clifford J. Shateran, Jack Adrian Vandersloot, Sister Marie Benedict O'Toole, Theodore Curtis, Catherine Jekyll, Daryl C. Morris, Florence L. Post, Marilyn Hannenberg, Shirley Ann Brinks, Deborah Jean Stratton, Marjorie Ellen Feenstra, Sherry Vanderlucht, Kathleen Fay Osi, Jeffrey Howe, Linda K. Wiemhoff, Donna Westfall, June Lee Germerod, Marjorie Berta Francis Woodson, Eileen D. Corey, Pat Anderson, Reverend B. L. Chandler, Judy Bibler, Jenny Loomis, Albert Loomis, Susan Fillmore, Tim Griffin, Michelle Ostyke. Vernon Babcock Jr. Fred Nix. John Carpenter. Mary Jane Castor. Evelyn A. Klimek. Jim Whitaker. Ernest Gee. Rick Van Wielden. Garrett Van Lewin. Eleanor Van Leeuwen, Johnnelly Hebron, Janet May Datema, Leon Eugene Saunders, Arthur J. Gagowski, Ron L. Westendorf, Sybil James, David J. Walsh, Doris Artis, Joseph Feenstra, Joe Wybinga Jr., Vivian G. Foster, Richard E. Wicks, Trudy Finstey, Janice Boomers, Joe Stewart, Dale Gould, Brenda Slotsima, Janet Roskam, Wanda Evanstein, Jackie E. Harvey, Alice L. Vandersher, 
Harvey Alley, Samuel L. Curry, Ted Carpenter, Renee Ann Brink, Joshua Brewer, Joe Stewart, Dale Gould, Brenda Slatsima, Janet Roscoe, Wanda Evanstein, Jackie E. Harvey, Alice L. Vanderskur, Harvey Alley, it's also Harvey's birthday today in the 10th, Samuel L. Curry, Ted Carpenter, Renee Ann Brink, Joshua Brewer, Ryan Patrick Klein, Johanna Chris Decker, Richard Kuypers, Timothy M. Hobecki, Rich Belka, David C. Hansen, William D. Cleveland. Thank you for joining us. We certainly long for the time that we can all be together again, sharing stories, holding hands, and giving each other hugs. We also wanted to let you know that you will receive an ornament, an ornament with your loved one's name on it. In the next couple weeks, please look for that in the mail. So please join me in a closing prayer. Bless those who mourn, eternal God, with the comfort of your love that may face each new day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given. May our memories be joyful, our days enriched with friendship and encircled by your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>